Welcome to the Daybreak with Jeff Slakey podcast. I'm so happy you found us. Please subscribe, rate, review, and share this with your circle of influence. It's a collection of the interviews, news, and conversation during Daybreak with Jeff Slakey on iFiber One News Radio, KMAS, weekdays from 6 to 9. Hey, good Thursday morning, everybody. Jeff Slakey and Spencer Hughes here on the Daybreak Show. Morning, Spencer. Hey, good morning. Two weeks into May. Can you believe it? Flying by. I cannot. No, we are in the, the Ides of May, and uh, it, the rain is really coming down. I think the whole weekend is, we got rain in the forecast. Yeah, it's going to be a very soggy. We should get quite a bit of rain. Very soggy weekend. But it'll be uh, nicer next week. Coming up. Yeah, no. So you better you better keep to that. <laughs> Today in the news, the latest on the COVID numbers for Mason County, free potatoes today in Tacoma. There's a new principal at Shelton High School, and we have to unfortunately report on a bunch of cancellations that we heard about yesterday. I'll have that soggy forecast for you. We'll talk to Jennifer Beria from the Mason County EDC on resources available for businesses and workers. Also today, Allison Smith from Olympic College Shelton talks about how they've had to adjust to COVID-19. Oh, and last night I did the chamber after hours. It was a Zoom virtual one. That was something else. And the other one that I'm seeing online is that the mask market is really taking off. Yeah, I'm finding. I was looking for some shirts on Amazon, and I I ended up seeing a link on masks, and it led me to like a dozen links of people that are just designing some really cool Really interesting, beautiful masks, really. And I see people out in public all the time with some really cool ones. And I ask them, you know, did they make them? Did they buy them? It's a big thing. Yeah, well, I mean, who'd have thought in 2020 and as technologically advanced as we are right now, uh, one of the best skills to have is being able to use a sewing machine. Yeah, incredible. Mason County Public Health reporting one new confirmed case in their daily brief, a female in their 20s. There are now five active cases. The total since this began is 30 positive cases of COVID-19 in Mason County. As of the 11th, there's been 1,388 tests performed. Mason County Public Health continuing contact interviews. And to avoid exposure, continue to follow the guidance of washing hands frequently and thoroughly, staying home unless essential to work, and trying to limit travel to only medical appointments, medication pickups, and once every two-week grocery shopping needs. Well, a spate of closures to tell us all about here this morning. Heard word three great local events were canceled yesterday due to coronavirus. Skookum Rotary Club is canceling this year's Oyster Fest event. And based on potential COVID-19 risks and social distancing guidelines, most likely be required for the remainder of the year. They don't believe they can hold an event that could draw over 12,000 people into a single confined area. Of course, this was a tough decision. They had to make it at this time because of all the commitments that must be made to the multiple partners and to the local not-for-profit volunteers. Big loss to the community. However, human safety and disease prevention, one of their most important considerations. The club does plan to be back for Oyster Fest 2021. I've reached out to the club, and we'll see if we can get a representative on just to talk about that tough decision. Also a tradition for 70 years, Shelton Kiwanis has chosen to cancel this year's Pancakes in the Park. They wrote on their Facebook, Times Are Rough. If you're able, please consider spending the money that you would have paid for breakfast tickets or sponsoring the event within our wonderful community. When you patronize and local uh, restaurants and businesses, it does make a difference. And then also in Thurston County, we heard from the county commissioners, the Thurston County Fair has been canceled this year as well. Fair staff working on a plan to continue to hold the youth market sales, maybe virtually, Next year, when it comes back, it will be the 150th year of the Thurston County Fair. Yeah, unfortunate news, but really probably the right decisions to make the way things stand right now. Shelton School District School Board this week approved the hiring of Bruce Kipper as the new principal of Shelton High School beginning July 1st. Mr. Kipper has had a 32-year career in education. He's currently the Director of Athletics and Activities at Tempe Union High School District. His professional experience also includes, as a school principal, Mr. Kipper has been responsible for day-to-day operations of school, working with staff to set and carry out school goals, effectively communicating with staff, students, families, and community to develop a positive atmosphere conducive to high achievement, and effectively selecting, developing, and evaluating staff. 
Mr. Kipper was also very active in athletics, both as an athlete and later on as a coach. Played for the Texas Rangers Baseball Club from 1983 to 1987. That's pretty cool. As a uh, contracted player yeah. for the organization at three different levels of professional baseball. Also during the school board meeting this week, the board approved the name of the new high school that will share space at the Choice Building. The new high school will be called Cedar High School. We talked with Choice Principal Stacy Anderson and Vice Principal Amber Hosford about the new school earlier this week on the show. And you can find that on our Daybreak tab of our website, ifiber1newsradio.com. And today's the day. Washington State farmers will give away more than 200,000 pounds of potatoes at the Tacoma Dome, part of the mission to get 1 million pounds of potatoes in the hands of people in need. The News Tribune reports the potatoes meant to be sold to restaurants, but of course COVID-19 and the pandemic hit. The Washington State Potato Commission is coordinated with local volunteers at the Tacoma Dome. Bags will be loaded right into vehicles. And again, this is today at the Tacoma Dome looking to give away 200,000 pounds of potatoes. Again, today on the show, the Mason County EDC, Olympic College Shelton as well, as we all talk and adjust to COVID-19. More Daybreak Show is on the way. From the iFiber One News Radio Studios, you're listening to Daybreak. Well, good morning again, everybody. The Daybreak Show rolls on. Jeff Slicky, Spencer Hughes via Zoom video conference to talk about the economic development of Mason County. The executive director, Jennifer Barry. Jennifer, how are you? Good to see you. I'm doing all right. How are you guys? I can see that in the background, uh, that is a nice background. It tells me that you are in the office today. And uh, We are. We have off and on been in the office through the whole thing. Um, it helps that... You know, I, I never say that it helps to have less employees, but it helps that it's just Karen and I, and we're able, or her office is probably 50 feet away from mine. So when we need to be here and we need to have more hands on, we're able to come in. And or you, when we have important radio shows. Too. Yeah, right. Sure. <laughs> I know that you are in the PUD billing office too, and they've had that uh, kiosk right out front um, there. The, the the main walk-up has been closed for a while now, but that kiosk, every time I come by uh, into the studio and I drive by there, it looks like people are utilizing that. It seems like a good resource. They are. I'm dropping off payments in their payment box and really getting familiar with that kiosk. It was excellent that they put it in. Although um, people still sometimes mess up a little bit and put things in the different slots where you're not supposed to put them. So it does get a little bit jammed sometimes. (laughs) Definitely check it out. Read the instructions on the screen before you proceed. Right. (laughs) All right, let's head over to choosemason.com. It's the Mason County's EDC website. On there, of course, like many websites, have resources to COVID-19. So I thought today would be a good idea just to go through some of the things that you have available uh, for not only business resources and worker resources, uh, business resources. And I talked to Jim Morrell from uh, Peninsula Credit Union this week. We talked about the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the other things that is on here are the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Uh, is this kind of a, uh, how is this uh, in, in, intertwined with what's going on with COVID? So they were opened for COVID. It allows um, It allows you to essentially get a loan, uh, an easier process for you to be able to get a loan to help you through the the different funding issues that you might come across. Um, the two big ones that came from the federal government with funding for them were the Paycheck Protection Program and the Economic Injury Disaster Loans. We call them the EIDL loans. Um, they were uh, the first one to really get started because they had an amount of that loan application that could be forgivable depending on the number of employees that you had. So Mm -hmm. you were able to go in and fill out the application. And if you were interested in only taking that advance, you could do that and not go after the loan. So it's essentially both through the um, small business administration at the federal level. That one is um, specific to, it's, it's essentially a small business loan, but you're able to get through it. Um, a little bit faster and to be able to talk different funding amounts because it is emergency based. So they were able to, that one already kind of sat there. It got additional funding and pushed out. So we've had businesses that have gone after that 
Um, there is still funding in both of the programs, so it's important for those businesses to know that. If you haven't heard back, um, just to give you a little bit of comparison, I don't have the idle numbers in front of me, but the Paycheck Protection Program in Washington alone um, over the last, what's it been, month and a half, almost two months, um, they have processed 50,288 loans, which is close to $5 billion for that Paycheck Protection Program. Wow. So it is a huge number. And in our surrounding, um, we, in our surrounding states, we are the highest one that they've loaned to. Oregon's at $3 billion. Um, Idaho's at $719 million. Alaska's at 338 That's the same region. So those are the numbers that I have. That does have a lot to do with um, where the employees are based. So we do have quite a bit more um, population and employed people here than, say, Alaska. So uh, that, yeah. that <laughs> difference makes a little bit more sense. But just looking at the sheer numbers that they've had to go through um, systems crashings, they've had to readjust, do different applications for different programs as the CARES Act came forward. Um, a lot of other requirements were, were listed in there that they then had to incorporate into a system that was not ready to handle quite that capacity, but they keep improving it and moving it forward. Under the work worker resources tab there on that same COVID-19 page, uh, there is some more information from Employment Security Department, Unemployment mm -hmm. Insurance. I talked, as I mentioned, with Jim Morrell from Peninsula Credit Union, and he was telling me about the rise of increase of unemployment. It's fraud, basically, where somebody will use, like, my name, for example, and apply for unemployment insurance. And I think they had some reports and cases where employees of theirs, you know, they, he'd get the phone call. Hey, <laughs> is so-and-so employed there? They fill out a claim and he looks down the hall and he says, no, they're still here. They're, they're still working right. for us. What this is a, What's this is a on? terrible turn of events. It is a horrible turn of events. And it's, it's one of those things that just irritates me because all of the work that's going into making sure that the people that are actually unemployed um, gets the funding that they need to then have their identity stolen, their ability to, even in the future, um, access those dollars or the business. Maybe maybe that's something that doesn't correlate with people, but when the business play, pays out in a normal circumstance, um, not COVID related, but in a normal circumstance, when the business pays out those unemployment dollars, there's an increase on what it is that they have to pay back to kind of balance out the system. So you have somebody who is terminated, who is let go, who's accessing those dollars, that business is then kind of increased payment to help rebuild what it is that they have available. When you have these fraud, uh, these people going after money, um, you are impacting your businesses your, and not just your individuals, not to mention all of the work that they have to do now that somebody has their social security number. Somebody can not just even go after unemployment, they can open credit cards. They can, at, this time is just so precarious anyway that to add that additional worry into it, I think is just it's really disheartening. It's real, yeah, yeah, it's terrible when I heard that um, news. And so there is links on that site on your page, choosemason.com under COVID-19 resources for worker resources on that information for workers. Also links to the IRS, of course. We still have to remember mm -hmm. that eventually it's, I mean, eventually it'll be tax time again, whether or not it, it's going to be the end of uh, July or whatever they said, or even right. extended further there. So it's it's just a tough time for everybody. It looks though that businesses, workers, the general population seems to be gathering around supporting each other in as best as, as best as ways as possible. I mean, that kind of, that's kind of how, that's kind of how we've built things. Right. And, and I think as we move forward through the governor's reopening plan, um, those different phases and the different levels that businesses are going to be able to open, 
um, what businesses are going to be able to open in phase two, in phase three, and in phase four, really looking at what we can still do to minimize those impacts. You know, social media is a great tool, but it's also kind of frustrating because you do start to see the different areas where people aren't maintaining those those safety boundaries. So really as a business, not just looking at their reopening plans as, you know, a suggestion, making sure that their employees know how they need to act every day, especially if you're dealing with the public, so that the public knows that when they come to your store, when they come to visit your business, they are in a clean environment, they're in a safe place, they they know that they're they're being protected as well as the employees. So really looking, especially as we move into the beautiful weather, that 80 degree weekend was blissful. I loved it, but um, really looking at at what we're doing and just ma making sure that we're doing what we can to not have uh, another shutdown further in the future. I was because we're not going to be able to respond well to that. You no, know, there's a lot of good resources on the website. Again, choosemason.com. Uh, EDC Director Jennifer's on the line with me now via Zoom video conference. Good to see you. I'm glad to know that you and everybody's healthy and safe, and and we're getting through this together. And uh, yeah. more information, just let me know, and we'll get you on. Okay. Will do. Thank you so much. I appreciate good. your time. Yeah. Good to see you. You're listening to Daybreak on i Fiber One News Radio. Well, good morning, everybody. And uh, Daybreak Show rolls on here, Jeff Slakey and Spencer Hughes, via Zoom video conference from the remote Olympic College Shelton offices. That's Allison Smith. Allison, how are you? I am. I am doing great. How are you? Are you you holding up at home? Or? We're doing as best we can uh, at home <laughs> and at the station and, and just kind of trying to wrap our heads around all that's been happening. Um, good opportunity now to catch up with you and things that are going on with Olympic College Shelton. I think a lot of folks, as this crisis started, um, a, a lot of the focus rightly so, is, is on the kids and through the uh, elementary, middle, and high school education experience because, you know, they're unable to uh, fend for themselves, you know, in the sense that the parents need the information, the parents need to be able to access the stuff online and things like that. And then when you graduate high school, you know, you're an adult. And so you should probably try to figure these things out yourself. But this is a tough time right now. It is, it is a tough time. It's a tough time for our students um, as well as our staff and faculty because we, in a very short amount of, amount of time, uh, went strictly online and uh, uh, many of our teachers had not been prepared to do that. And so we, over the spring break, we postponed our, our spring quarter by a week. And so um, we did a lot of training to get all the uh, instruction online. And um, we also offer different services, um, uh, all the student services virtually online. Olympic With College Shelton will be starting our virtual office hours next week. Oh, great. So with with the spread out campus at Olympic College Shelton, uh, Shelton, Bremerton, and Paulsbo, how much would you say was already either distance learning or online learning uh, and then to get to 100%? I think, I, I don't know for sure, but my guess would be that about a third of our classes were already online. Um, in all honesty, in some ways, it really opens up a lot of possibilities for the Shelton students because of the fact that now um, they can take any class they want. It doesn't have to just be, um, you know, at, at the Shelton campus. But um, it it's also adds a lot of difficulty. As I'm sure you've heard, there's a lot of places in Mason County that don't have Wi-Fi. So we have ramped up the Wi-Fi capabilities into our parking lot for students and um, are providing all kinds of loaner equipment, uh, laptops and tablets and hotspots that they can check out through our IT department. So spring quarter is going on now. How mm -hmm. are the students uh, adapting and the teachers adapting to this? Um, 
I think fairly well. Like I said, we did we did see a drop in enrollment, of course, um, and and we personally lost um, a handful of students between winter quarter and spring quarter. That is typical, but all in all, our enrollment numbers are actually way better than we anticipated they are. Um, uh, but yeah, it, it it is a it's a hardship. We've been talking with uh, folks all over the county about the plans that were essentially created from scratch as this came about. There may have been a couple thoughts here and there of, oh, we could maybe do this or we could maybe do that. Um, The fact that Olympic College Shelton and Olympic College, just the whole, all of it is very, uh, is a a small college making it um, more nimble to make these changes quickly as opposed to major university that has long storied histories of, of ways they do things? We've gotten a lot of help from the State Board of Community and Technical Colleges. Um, uh, a, a lot of the universities, um, they face different challenges than we do. I, I don't know if it's any easier or not, but um, it it. It is difficult um, uh, all around for our students, actually. Yeah. So spring quarter is online. Um, as we move to summer and fall, what are the thoughts? Uh, the Department of Instruction at Olympic College has already determined that there we will be offering strictly online. However, um, the colleges got together and through the state board, they sent a request to the governor's office a few weeks ago. There's a list of 130 different programs that um, fall under the essential category of face-to-face labs. Um, so, for example, our nursing assistant certification program, students will be on campus next week um, uh, for their face-to-face labs. You know, of course, we're following all the the safety guidelines and we'll be taking temperatures as they come on and they have to fill out the form about their health. Um, We're requiring masks and, um, you know, currently our our entire campus is bagged up and sanitized. Basically, all the furniture is covered. Um, but he did approve those 130 different courses, one of which is the flagging certification and forklift certification that we offer in Shelton through community education. And um, we're actually holding our first flagging class this coming Tuesday, um, May 18th. And it will also follow those same safety protocols. But, you know, this is the time of year and especially since construction has has been opened up, that that we need to get those flaggers certified so that they can um, keep the traffic safe. So when that group of folks are coming in for that specific flagging or another in-person class um, for safety and everything, you mentioned that all the distancing and social distancing, are you guys able to provide masks or gloves or is that something that people bring themselves or is it a a comfort level or is it a a mandatory kind of thing mandatory okay um so mandatory temperature checks and and um yeah social distancing so we had to limit the number of students because you know there's only so much room in in the classes um but we have some masks but you know, like with everybody else, they're they're not in ample supply. So we are requesting that students bring their own masks, and then we will provide if they don't. But um, uh, yeah, sorry, lost my thought. Oh, no, that's great. Uh, Olympic.edu. You can find the links to the Shelton campuses there with all sorts of information and email. Again, um, remote office hours will be available for students to check in with their. Uh, professors to see how spring quarter is going. There's also uh, exceptions that have been made for running start students, and that information is available as well for uh, those folks who are looking to move from high school uh, through the AA uh, degree of an uh, of an associates there. So there's a lot of good information on the website. Again, Olympic.edu, the Shelton campus, making uh, all sorts of new things that are happening these days. It's just bizarre, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. It, it is. Um, but, you know, a lot of good has come out of it. And, and 
we, I, I also would like to point out that, you know, we have um, food bank uh, supplies available for our students and uh, virtual tutoring and testing. And um, we are moving forward with our construction trades program and still hoping, hoping to be starting that fall 2020. Wow. But um, uh, yeah, so, and, and, we're looking for a we're looking for a temporary space to lease to run that that program. So if anybody out there has um, a facility that you might have available for us for a few months, that'd be wonderful. Oh, you should call the Port of Shelton. Maybe they've got something over there open. We've Ooh. done that. <laughs> <laughs> Allison yeah. Smith, it was sure good to see you. I'm glad everything good is going well you. for you. Yeah, and, it was great uh, to see. You. We'll check in on how Olympic College moves through the summer and into the fall, and and we'll all get through this together. Of course, be safe, be healthy, and it was really and good as soon to as see. I get a haircut. It'll be better, so it I can't wait for those hairdressers to get back. <laughs> <laughs> Allison Smith from Olympic College. Nice to see you. All right, you too. Thank you. From the iFiber One News Radio Studios, you're listening to Daybreak. And once again, good Thursday morning to you. I hope you're having a great start to the day. Spencer Hughes and Jeff Slecky here on the Daybreak Show. Good morning, Spencer. Hey, good morning. What's going on today? So last night, the Joint Chambers in Mason County, the Shelton Mason County Chamber of Commerce and the North Mason Chamber of Commerce joined forces for their uh, after hours. This is something that hasn't happened, I don't think, in the, in the last couple of months. Of course, it usually would be a gathering at a location, and the uh, May one is usually our community credit unions. So they were still the host sponsor, uh, but Heidi McCutcheon and uh, Pam Voles from the Chambers and Burt Fisher from OCCU, they worked to do this Zoom video conference um, chamber after hours, and it was pretty darn cool. First thing I got to say is um, the ingenuity to get this figured out to provide this for the members. It was cool to see everybody in there. There's probably about 50 people, and I didn't know this, but you can you can break out into like sub rooms huh. on Zoom. So there was 50 people, and if 50 people all try to talk at once, you know, it's almost impossible. Yeah, I was going to so ask how So they broke us up into like... Uh, well, for the for the first part of it, everybody was pretty quiet, mm -hmm. and then we broke out into our rooms where it was like six folks, and we had good conversation. It was just good catching up, and then you go back into the main room, if you will, and then they kind of separate you again, randomize. It was pretty slick. That's cool. Who was wearing the best pajamas? I'm just curious. How many people were wearing pajamas? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling tales outside of school on that one. There, not, no. Yeah, I was going to ask how that worked, because that's pretty cool that you can do that, that you can kind of funnel yourself. in the. It's almost like a regular seminar then, where, where you break out into groups. I mean, a lot of companies exactly. do that. Yeah. Yeah, it was it it worked out. It seemed to work out perfect. Uh everybody jumped on that had the links and all that stuff. So it was a, it was a pretty cool deal. I can only imagine how it would be if we were to do this in person. Obviously, one, we wouldn't. And two, um to gather 50 people in a room, we'd have to have a pretty big room and and everybody would have to, you know, of course, hopefully have some sort of coverings or gloves or masks and I know you started the new job at the at the car dealership this week um you're you have to wear masks how's that been it has been tough i sold my first car ever in my life yesterday evening by the way and it was very exciting and i joked about it on social media i go i just sold my first car a brand new car while wearing a mask and disposable gloves i mean the whole time they never came off and it's just such a weird thing because i'm such as you are a people person I mean, I think about all the events you've emceed and all the places you've been. Imagine if we were still doing that, but you had to emcee and tell your jokes and do, do, do all the stuff you're doing, leading the discussion while wearing a mask and wearing creepy yeah. gloves and stuff. It's just, it's a weird vibe. I got to tell you, the, it's a necessary vibe. I'm not downplaying that. I'm not belittling it. We have to do what we have to do to be safe. But the customers clearly don't like it. The salespeople don't like it. Nobody likes it. We're all praying for the day when these masks can come off and the gloves can come off, as they say. Uh, 
but it's just a weird experience. But what I have noticed on the positive side is people get very creative with these masks. I mean, the, these folks yeah. uh, were big um, college, you know, sports fans, and they had the. It's cool. You have your teams on there. You've got your patriotic people with their red, white, and blue. You've got people with their favorite designs. Uh, people with their sewing machines being really creative, and those like me who can't sew. Amazon's got thousands of these things. They do. And the other thing is, as you're talking about this, and I'm thinking ahead, eventually we're going to be gathering in groups like at sporting events. And um, a lot of folks will opt to wear masks. And I've seen some really cool Seahawks masks, for example. Uh, but they will they could do all sorts of things. You know, Seahawks could provide uh, masks almost as like one of the giveaways, you know, you know how they have the bobbleheads yeah. and things like that. I mean, that's the next thing is a branded, I think I saw like a Colgate mask the other day. Uh, I mean, it's smart. companies now are going to start branding themselves. It's very smart because people are, you know, they're still getting in that contact, even if it's six feet or whatever, but it, it really lends to people sharing their personalities. But you're right. Companies are getting smart. And if everyone's walking around, you know, I mean, think about it like the car dealership. You know, we sell Ford or something. We're all walking around with Ford ones because Ford wants us to or, you know, right. Dodge Ram wants us to. You know, on, on Tuesdays we wear a Dodge Ram mask or something. I don't know. But people, the sky's the I limit. I mean, it, it, it's a whole new thing. It's a whole new thing. And the other one, too, is I love how – in ingenious people are and how quickly people's ingenuity comes to the surface. I saw a mask uh, yesterday on Facebook and it had a little flap on it and you're like, what is this? And so you open the flap and somebody has put in there a, a hole with a grommet around it and you can stick a straw in it and drink out of the straw without having to take your mask down. You just open up this little flap. I thought like the that size was of cool. A postage stamp. I saw that it was really cool, and at first I thought it was a spoof, you know, like a Photoshop thing where people are, you know, they've done all sure. sorts of funny things with these masks and memes and stuff. But this is an actual product that uh, McComber, uh, let's see, makes uh, this lady Ellen McComber designed them. She made forty masks in the first week, thirty bucks a piece, and they sold out within thirty minutes. And she's making more of these wow. things, so it's a real item. I thought it was just a joke at first. Yeah, and this is uh, this is a whole new market. We talked last week about uh, jobs that people will have in the next couple of years that have never even been invented. Uh, you know, contact tracers, mask makers, all sorts of things. Uh, the new the new horizon is here. It's pretty fascinating. There's it a really lot is. of great patterns out there, and and like you said, it really shows off your own your own personality in a in a new way. That's, yeah, I think it's neat. it's it's almost like the the tie. It's almost like the necktie uh, for everybody that, you know, in the beginning, it was just like you had a blue tie, a red tie, a yellow tie, and then you had the Jerry Garcia ties. I had some of those back in the 90s, and, and people really started like, you know, it, it, people, you know, Brush Limbaugh and other people, like they made their own ties, the other tie lines, and well, I think even, that's what's not, happening. You're not even this. talking about the best ties out there, the extra long Trump ties. No, everybody's I, got ties. Everybody's got <laughs> <laughs> sad you ever seen those they're long i used to i had one once many many years ago and it was it was long i don't know which ones yeah that, that's a whole thing too too uh with the masks like how people wear them versus you know like kind of high low with the ties who would uh -huh. like end up at your belly button or the ones who would go all the way down past your zipper and <laughs> yeah that's uh, a whole new oh, world out yeah. there. All right, more Daybreak Show <laughs> is coming up here. Good Thursday morning to you. Thank you so much for listening to today's Daybreak with Jeff Slakey podcast. Again, I'm so happy and honored you found us and chose to listen. Please subscribe, rate, review, and share this with your circle of influence. It's a collection of some of the interviews, news, and conversation during Daybreak with Jeff Slakey on iFiber One News Radio KMAS weekdays from 6 to 9. Thank you so much again and talk with you next time.